Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new CUBE conversation. I'm very pleased today to welcome Gary Pika, who is from True Methods, a Kaseya company. Gary, can you tell us about yourself and what True Methods does as part of Kaseya? Yeah, so Christoph, my <clears throat> Reader's Digest version of my background is uh, I started out as an MSP. Uh, I have built and scaled and exited two MSPs. Uh, but for the past 15 years, I've run True Methods, which is training, peer, and we built a software package called MyAT Process. It's the first and only fully functional VCIO uh, platform for MSPs. And uh, my company was acquired by Kaseya. And now in my role, uh, I head up everything that's enablement. So that's our peer, which we have nearly 700 MSPs as part of our uh, peer organization. Uh, as well as our powered services, which is all of our marketing services for MSPs and our industry team, industry event team. So I pretty much am MSP 24 seven. Well, you know, you know quite a bit about MSPs and actually this is a great conversation I wanted to have with you about, you know, the really the, the problems that MSPs may be having. Uh, and there are a few things that, that come to mind. Obviously MSPs have to deliver a service uh, they're on 24 seven, as you mentioned, yet they have to deal with a variety of environments, many different customers, sometimes in different industries with very different uh, needs, uh, which also drives potentially the need to manage many different tools. Now you think about this from a business standpoint, and you know, I'm a business guy. Uh, I like top line, that's how much you sell, and I like bottom line, that's how much is left in my pocket at the end of the day. The problem- I like that better. <laughs> I like bottom line too. Yes. Uh, the problem is um, what, we, uh, what we see is that if you're in a services business, typically if you're an accountant or uh, you're, you're dealing with uh, this type of, of business service, you're going to be in a 30 to 35% margin. I think those are numbers that you guys have, have surveyed. And I know Fred, uh, your CEO, was mentioning those numbers uh, recently. And an MSP though, is not going to be in those, uh, those general margins. It's going to be eight to 12%, which is really, really tight. So Gary, let's talk about what's going on in the industry with uh, margins. Uh, what, what can you tell us? Yeah, so it, it's funny, you know, uh, what I see is that so much has changed for MSPs in the recent years in terms of the demands that SMBs have. They ask so much more of them from a security standpoint, the fact that they depend on technology more, they're going through their digital, you know, revolution, you know, at this time and changing their environment to more, you know, cloud environments. They have to be up 24 seven. And so the MSPs have to have more tools, but they also have more and different services they need to offer. And they have, have many times had problems increasing their price and value at the same rate that their costs have gone up. Tools, talent, time, all of those things. And so, you know, you mentioned that MSPs, you know, the average MSP is in that, you know, eight to 12% net profit if they take a true owner salary. And I have seen some industry statistics that I've seen that say that 50% of MSPs, if they really take that salary are at or below break even. And when you compare that, as you mentioned, to accountants and lawyers and other strategic relationships, that doesn't seem fair because they can live without their accountant for a week or two, um, but they cannot live without their MSP support. So we're way more important, we're make way more strategic, but we're not commanding the same return on our risk and investment. And that's what, that's my life is dedicated, right? To, uh, to, you know, to change in that for MSPs. And it's possible because top MSPs do run at 35% net profit. So that's an interesting point you're making. So let's talk about tools because those who are running at those levels of margin probably are doing something very different from other MSPs who maybe through, through the years have started accumulating a bunch of tools. They're dealing with different clients, different environments, but isn't that the kiss of death at the end of the day? Yeah, so think about this. We in, in our peer group, we do special projects. So last quarter, the quarter before, we did a special project on their tools for them to all look at and compare what categories, what tools, what they're paying. And can you guess how many tools the average MSP has total in their business today? Could you take any guess? 
I really couldn't stop it. I'm going to say, okay, let's go. It's in the 60 to 100 minimum. Not oh, you're close. Not we have people at 60, but the average was about 40. 40 tools, and that's whether you're a 20 million dollar MSP or a 500 thousand dollar MSP. So you have to put that into the equation. You have the same amount of complexity, and they probably have over 30 vendors. So. Their cost, if you look at the cost per tools, like on a unit basis, like cost per seat, seven years ago, it was probably 10% of their total cost per seat. It's 25 to 30% now. So it's much more important how they deal with that is, is strategic to their business. And it affects everything, including talent. You hire new talent, and instead of training them on 10 tools, they need now to become experts on 40 tools because most people touch everything in an MSP because they're multifunction. So it really is much different, right? They have all this complexity and so many more demands from their SMB customers. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense to me. And, and candidly, I, I don't know that anybody can really do well uh, with 40 tools. It's just not humanly possible. Uh, and, and that creates, uh, I think, another issue, which is uh, in time, you probably end up with service problems or quality of service issues. Uh, there, there's something else that I want to bring up to which, you know, okay, lots of tools, that's an issue. The other thing that happens very often, and you see this very often in very large enterprises, of course, you know, customize to your business. That's great. Uh, you should probably do that. Now, SMBs, to the point you were making earlier, also have very specific business needs. And it turns out that customization problem, which I think is a problem potentially, happens also in the SMB space. And the brunt of the, the work ends up on the MSPs. So can you walk us through why customization can be a problem uh, and how MSPs have to deal with it? So standardization is our friend. So if every customer has different tools, if every customer has different service offering, it, it's like not only is it harder to support them, but they become noisier and more expensive, but we also can secure them. So we need to be able to have a service offering and a tool stack that we can afford to deliver to every single customer and every single user. And when you get there, you change, you lower that level of complexity, you lower the noise level or the amount of tickets that you get, which lowers your costs, and you increase your ability to secure those customers. So it really is at the center of where we are right now. Right, and the other thing that I, I want to bring up here, customization combined with many tools, so let's say 40 on average, nobody's talking here about APIs and do things actually work together because you know not everybody has bi-directional APIs. You get a lot of different you know integrations that happen. Somebody updates their product. Now you have to potentially rewrite some integration you've actually customized for uh, a specific uh, environment, and it's just not manageable long term. You're right. Standardization is your friend, uh, but you still at the same time want to have the capability as an MSP to serve your customers' needs. So therein lies the, uh, the trick. And we'll talk about what Kaseya is doing to actually solve what looks like an impossible scenario. Uh, and, and I definitely want to double click on that in a minute. Let's talk about risk in general for MSPs, because now we're combining multiple solutions, uh, potentially many vendors, different environments that are customized. What about business risk for an MSP when you're running at those margin levels that are way too low? Yeah, uh, I, I tell our peer members, like for the amount of risk that you carry now, you better get paid, right? You better make money, you know, for that risk. And so what the job of an MSP to do is they need to reduce their customer's risk so they can reduce their own risk. And if you think about it, as an MSP, almost all my customers were bigger than me and had better lawyers, right? So for us, it was a matter of making sure that we were delivering a very solid full stack. So in other words, not getting some people some tools and some people other tools, you can have it in any color you want as long as it's black. In order to do that, you have to be able to do it in a cost-effective way that you can afford to deliver to every single customer. Right, and that's what I want to talk about because uh, recently you introduced as uh, a company, Kaseya, 
Okay, so you have 365, and it's really uh, a very, very complete solution. I know it's going to keep adding uh, components to it. It's got, what, seven or eight components right now, big sort of uh, parts of technology that are critical for supporting uh, an end user through an MSP type of service. So can you walk us through, first of all, the adoption? I heard you're in the thousands of um, uh, customers now using it. That would be MSPs. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be, there'll be more. So can you walk us through what it is, where you're at with adoption, and more importantly, I want to double click on how much more money are they making? Okay, so uh, right now we have just in the short time since we were in Vegas, crossed over 5,000 MSPs. So in my couple decades in this industry, I've never seen an adoption uh, at that rate. Um, especially if you think about the fact that this is a multi, you know, it's a multi product offering, right? And so if, uh, to be able to see so many people make that decision, to give you an example, in the peer groups that I run, because they're educated and they understand their cost and they're able to evaluate what, what that looks like, we're over 63% of our peer members are on Kaseya 365, right? So that that tells you something. And so what I've seen, let, let me deal with the cost piece of it and the savings and, and, and what that looks like, because that's easy. But then I want to go behind to tell you what I think the bigger impact that I have seen. So on the cost side, most people, and again, I dealt, I was involved with the launch, so I got to see many examples. Um, they're reducing their tools cost by anywhere from 10 to 25, 30%. It's impactful. So how that translates, I had MSPs just based on this change that could throw an additional three to 4% net profit. Think about that. Not gross profit, right? Because it, it, it falls through, right? All the way to the bottom line. There's very few things you can do to move your, without a lot of revenue, adding a lot of revenue uh, to move your net profit percentage by three or 4%. It, it, it's, it's massive. But Christoph, let me tell you what a bigger impact has been. They've also generated more revenue. I'll give you this one example. Of all the MSPs that I spoke to about the components that are inside of Kaseya 365, almost none of them had the same amount of MDR, like the security license, as they did RMM. And when I asked them why, they said, well, based on the cost that we spend, not all customers see the value. Okay, so in other words, they're not fully protecting a percentage of their customer base. Now that it's included in 365, they can put it everywhere. They can give it away and reduce their risk, or they can sell it at a much reduced rate because they don't have any cost of goods sold associated with it and generate revenue. So I've seen people do both. But if you think about that, if you're an MSP who doesn't have MDR everywhere, like everyone was before this, now you have over 5,000 MSPs that are knocking on the door of your customer and asking why, okay? And then the bigger thing is, if you think about those 5,000 MSPs and all the customers and endpoints they have, SMBs are more secure today than they were before the launch because they have the complete stack because the MSP can afford to do it for them. So it, it really is transformational for the SMB and it's transformational in terms of the unit economics for MSPs. Absolutely, and the uh, adoption is phenomenal. Um, I've been a product guy in many industries for many years, and I have to say, uh, rarely have I seen such numbers. Uh, so this is very encouraging. Uh, I do like the comment you just made on the full stack, actually enabling and improving, enhancing, not only security, but also the capabilities at the end user level. At the same time, as an MSP, you're making more money, more margin, uh, more revenue. Uh, that's really an amazing combination. Uh, look, we've covered a lot of ground here. Uh, what closing, uh, closing thoughts would you have for uh, the MSPs uh, and the end users watching us today? So I'll close with two things. One, something's different about what's driving innovation right now. It was always the MSPs driving the SMBs to technology. Today, it's the SMBs telling the MSP where they need to be. And that means that they, everyone needs to be aware of where we are and the things we're talking about today, and they need to move forward. And the last thing I'll tell you is, um, Kaseya 365 was only the first step. So stay tuned and 
when you when our industry sees you know what's coming very soon and, and more over the next year, uh, it, it's going to really complete the transformation about how MSPs do business. Absolutely, and I know your CEO hinted at that uh, recently uh, on social media. So I look forward to uh, uh, hearing more from you directly and from Kaseya on what's coming next for 365. Thank you so much for, uh, for your time. This was uh, a great conversation. And thank you to our viewers uh, for taking the time. Mm -hmm.